Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 6. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 6 of Book 5. This proposition is the inverse of Proposition 4. Proposition 4 stated that if we had equal angular triangles, then these ratios would be true. This proposition is the inverse. If these ratios hold true, then the true triangles are equal angular. So let's start with our proof. First thing we're going to do is on point E, we're going to construct an angle that is equal to ABC. In other words, this angle is alpha, that angle is alpha. And again, we're going to do the same kind of thing, but on point F, we're going to construct an angle such that it is equal to this angle BCA. So alpha, beta, alpha, and beta. Now if we look at these two triangles, we have alpha, beta, alpha, beta. Since the sum of all the angles is equal to 180 degrees, this angle here must be the same as the angle there. That's Proposition 32 of Book 1. So now we have ABC and EFG, and these two triangles are equal angular. And because they are equal angular from the previous proposition of this book, we know that AB to BC will be equal to EG to EF. Again, that was just from the previous proposition. But AB to BC equals DE to EF. So if we take AB to BC and replace it with DE to EF in this equation, we end up that DE to EF is equal to EG to EF. But now we have DE and EG. The ratio to EF in both cases are the same, which according to Proposition 9 of Book 5 means that DE is equal to EG. Again, we can just sort of cross out that little bit there. So DE, just a moment, DE is equal to EG. And just using the same logic, we can show that df is equal to fg. Now, since de and, sorry, de is equal to eg, and df is equal to fg, and they have a common base, then according to Proposition 8, they must be equal triangles, which means that this angle here, alpha, will be equal, sorry, A will be equal to alpha. Again, that's Proposition 8 of Book 1. So finally, we have this line is equal to this line. EF is common. We have an equal angle in both of the cases. And according to Proposition 4, that means these two triangles are equal. This triangle is equal to this one then all the angles are equal, and therefore we have just shown that if we have these ratios hold true between these two triangles, the angles will be the same, or it will be an equal angular triangles. And that's it for this proposition. However, I would like to just take a little bit of a side. As a result of the last two proofs that we've done, we can look at some basic trigonometry and see how these proofs and trigonometry are related. Now, if we have two triangles, two right angle triangles to be, to be specific, let's assume that alpha is equal to A. Well, if alpha is equal to A, we have two angles that are equal to two angles, so the third angle must also be equal. So in other words, gamma will be equal to C. So we have two triangles that are equal, and so from these propositions, we know that the ratio of AC to AB will be equal to the ratio of DF to DE. So again, let's just restate this. If alpha is equal to A, two right angle triangles, then the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse, opposite to the hypotenuse, will be 
the same for both of these triangles. Now let's look at the inverse of this. Let's assume that AC to AB is equal to DF to DE. So again, I want to look at the angles alpha and A, and I'm looking at the ratios of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite over the hypotenuse. I'd like to show that alpha and A are equal. To do that, I'm going to assume first that they are not. So let us assume that G, E, F, and A, B, C are equal. And we have our two, excuse me, we have our two angles. Now, A, B, C, G, E, F are equal angular. So we have that A, C, sorry, AC to AB will be equal to GF to FE. All right, so we have this equation here, plus I've just added on the extra little bit from here to here. So again, if GEF is equal angular to ABC, all these relationships hold, this one being one that we are assuming to be true from the beginning. So with a bit of math, using Pythagoras' theorem, gf squared plus ef squared plus will be equal to eg squared. Likewise, df squared plus ef squared equals ed squared, so Pythagoras' theorem. But we're also going to use this relationship as well. So I've worked out the basic algebra. I'm not going to go through it here. If you wish to stop the video, pause it, prove it to yourself, or simply take my word for it. I leave it up to you. But basically what I have shown in this arithmetic is that the line EG and ED are of the same length. And if they are the same length, then G must be at the same point of D. So what I've just demonstrated, maybe not as thoroughly as some mathematicians would like. I'm not a mathematician. So there might be a mathematician out there who thinks it's not as rigorous as it could be, but I think we get the general idea. And I think it could be proven rigorously because we know it to be true. But anyway, what I've shown here is that if we take the ratio of AC to BC, and if it is equal to DF to DE, two right angle triangles, then alpha is equal to A. All right, so this is what I've just demonstrated, is that if the ratios are the same, then the angles are equal. If the angles are equal, the ratios are the same. So for every right triangle, we have, for every angle, we will have a unique ratio. If we have a ratio, it corresponds to a specific angle. If we have an angle, it corresponds to a specific ratio for right angle triangles. And we can just simply arbitrarily assign a name to this ratio, and the name that is being used is the name sine. So you've all heard of the sine of an angle. I was tutoring somebody once, and they were not aware that the sine of an angle is really and truly just the definition is the ratio between the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's the definition of sine. So we have that the sine of alpha is AC to AB, the sine of A is DF to DE. If these two are equal, the angles are equal. If the angles are equal, these two are equal. Again, this is for angles only between 0 and 90 degrees, because we're talking about right angle triangles. We could follow all the same logic and show that the ratio of what's called the adjacent or BC to AB and EF to ED have the same properties as sine in that they are unique for each angle. So we can give them a unique name and we can call it cosine. And just to show you how one of the most basic rules of sines and coses where you take the sine squared plus co squared. Well, sine is the ratio of AC to AB, so that's that, plus co squared is the ratio of BC to AB, 
And if you work through some very simple math, it's very easy to see that the sine squared of an alpha plus close squared of alpha will equal 1. Now everything I've talked about right now is for right angle triangles. Sines and cosines and trigonometry go beyond 0 to 90 degrees. They include definitions for their larger than 90 degrees. They include definitions for negative angles, which I don't think makes sense in um, basic Euclidean geometry um, in terms of what Euclid was looking at. But um, certainly these ratios are the, the roots of trigonometry. And I just wanted to demonstrate how the last two proofs lead us to the definition of sine and cosine. And that's it for this video. See you in the next one.